Okay, so let's start the USB introduction. When I say introduction, it's not that we will just introduce the topics, but we will try to see all the USB, I will say, uh, theory. So, do you know what USB? Okay, the first answer is go on wiki and you will see it. Uh, for sure, you, everybody uh, experiences. You always plug a mouth and things like that. I already discussed with you your project. And so let's go on. So, USB is for universal serial bus. Keep in mind, it is a serial one. That means you only have one bus, so you can't have mixed traffic or things like that on the line. Okay? So, just a sum up of this. Unplugable, I think everybody understands it. Quite simple. Protocol is serial, pool and host centric. Host, that means in your USB network, that means all the things that are connected together, you only have one host. On the host is the master, he is the one who is pulling the different device. A device can talk by himself like this, okay? Keep this in mind, it will be the architectures and it will explain after how the protocol is working. About the bit rate, so it's from 1.5 megabyte to 20 thousands. Uh, with STM32, we just stuck there with 480 megabytes. It's what, what we call the high speed. So we'll see three different speeds, the low speed, the full speed, and the high speed. So I don't know for you, but for me, I always mix the high speed, full speed, what is the f because the name is a little bit confusing. But it's like this, low speed is 1.5, 12, it was a uh, uh, full speed, and the high speed was the 480 megabytes. Max length of your cables, 5 meters. Mm, you can try a longer one, but there is a sense that it's not working. But, okay, the maximum voltage without uh, power delivery is 5 volts, and the current is in general 0.5, and 0.1 is when you plug first, it started at its amperes, and after it can negotiate to get more power if needed. That's up the, the device. Um, 5 volt for a charging device, up to 100 watt of a USB type C power delivery. So I already give you a couple of words on this. It's quite uh, specific to this. You can go up to 20 volt and 5 ampere on this. So you can power a laptop. We'll have a couple on work on this. Maximum number of device, 127. Not 28, because there is one address which is booked for the connection, it was the address 0. That can't belong to one of the devices. Okay? So this is a limitation of uh, all the networks. Pin, the number of pins that uh, you need for USB, it's 4 or 5. We'll see uh, after. Generally 4. 1 for supply, 2 for the data, 1 for the ground. And the topology is tire stars. We will see what it is after. The center of a star is always a hub. I will just explain this after. The story, I skip a little bit. Here we can see the different rates, the different USB that uh, could be addressed. For us, we just limited to this one, which USB 2.0. Today is the one we are able to, to address. So this is just historical. The USB organization. Uh, very important for you, you can find all the documentation there, all the specification, so the cables, the different ampere voltage, uh, what are the protocol, all the details are there. But there is also some tools. Um, for example, there is tools for doing the electrical testing. So I think it was you who are interesting. So tools is available there and all the details are there also. It's also on this side that you can request your vendor ID. We will see that a device, when you created it, you will embed it, a vendor ID on a, pro on a product ID. And if you want to have the USB logo on your product, you will have to buy a vendor ID. If you don't need just a logo, just want to use our STM32, you can request us to provide you a PID. But we will discuss this topic later. Uh, so, okay, so it's really a site that will for sure go to get documentation and get information. When you get a doubt, everything is there, I would say. About the post topology, so tire stars, so that means we've got a centers, a hub, and we've got everything around him. So we've got the host. As I said before, we only have one host for all the networks. 
And inside this host, there is what we call a root hub. So that means we can have a center of the star here with some device. And we've got a special device who could be hub. And on the center of this hub, and you can have around him many devices. It's okay for the tire stars topology. Not so complicated, I think. So maximum number of device 127, as I said before. Think about one thing. A hub is a device. That means one address is booked for this. So when I say 170 device, I will say 117 things connected to the host. Maximum number of hub is five in series. That means if you've got more, the last one won't be recognized and will be indoors. But frankly speaking, it's not very often that you connected many things together because since it was a serial bus, that means the bandwidth is shared for everybody starting from the host. So if you want to have some performance, but depending, sometimes you can have many things. Number of chair load is seven. That means on the stars, you can have no, have no more than seven connections together. That's a different limitation. The cable lens, I already told this. So the tire stars, typically one. You've got a host with a root hub, some device connected, then a hub, then another hub, and device, and things like that. I think it's quite simple. The limitation of five hubs, the root hub is not counting in. That means you've got one, two, three, four, five, and then the device. But no more. The last device can't be a, a, a hub, or it would be in all, for sure. Okay, this is physical layers. So now, um, I've got everything ready, I plug, and I want to debug. If you take an oscilloscope and put this on the pin, it will be really complicated to see what are the data. Why? It's because the data are encoded. There is two things. There is a non-reverse uh, non zero inverted coding, and there are also some bit stuffing. So I will just detail this, but just to tell you, if you've got an issue, it's not with a, um, with a oscilloscope that you will debug it. You will need to have some tools to, I will say, decode it dynamically. Some oscilloscopes have the capability to do it, but not all. And we often use some USB analyzer. I've bring one, and I think Lubos have bring another one. And you will see it will be our tools to analyze what are the traffic on the line. So, yes, it's over differential, so um, I forget to say that. We've got two pins of data, D plus and D minus. And they are in opposite. That means when the one is an, in the one, the other one is to zero. Okay? It's just a differential encoding between the both lines. It's okay for everybody that? <coughs> so just what is the bit stuffing? It's just to insert one zero after six consecutive one. It's just to give you information. It's not something you will deal with for sure. If you are just looking one bit and after a bit, you are in very big trouble. But it just to keep you that if you put an oscilloscope, what you are seeing is this kind of things, which will be encoded after. So quite complicated. Um, the non-return to zero inverted, if you don't know it. So it's just that you toggle the voltage when you get one, and you keep the same voltage when you get a zero. So here, just a sample. I've got a one, I toggle the level. Then I've got a zero, I keep the same level. So it's just to explain you how, how it's, I will say, encoding on the line. Now, from the electrical point of view, so let's talk about this four pin. One for the Webus, so it will be the power, five volt, the ground, and the data plus and the data minus. So there is some wire colors convention. But take care about this. Uh, it seems that we already received some cable from China where the colors was not the good one. And you can, <laughs> you can see what to expect. If you just switch the data, it's not important, but the bus on another pin could be destroying the ports for sure. So take care, and sometimes it's good just to check if you do some plug by yourself. Just if you plug an oscilloscope, you will see such kind of level because it's a voltage with a differential pairs. So on the plus, when on, or you are on the ground, on the D row, you will be on 3.3 on the D1, D, D minus, please. 
About the timing, so you have seen we only have some data link, I will say, or just power, no link for the clocking. So it's really important that we have an accuracy of the timing on the device, on, on the host. So you've got some constraint about the clocking of the IP on the both. Okay? This is really, I would say, a huge constraint, and if you don't fit this constraint, it won't work, or it won't work very well. So it's really something you have to take into account. For the high-speed capables on the hub, you have this requirement to have a speed of uh, the timing up to 500 ppm. And for the full speed, which is at uh, 12 megabyte, it uh, will be uh, 2050 ppm. So this clock accuracy is really, really strict. And we already talked about um, uh, electrical testing. This electrical testing, we check the level, but also this clocking. Mainly, it's the both things that will need to be checked. This is really important, and we will see that on our product, sometimes we can use our internal oscillators to do that on some specific case. It's some, on a specific chip, we've got some clock recovery system that means we've got an internal oscillator who could achieve this. But it's not possible for all the configuration. We will see it after. So we we'll need to have an accurate external oscillator connecting on our STM32. I just insist a little bit on this because we already have many requests on this because some customers have an issue and the problem comes from the oscillators they put on it which don't fit with these requirements. From the mechanical, um, I won't insist in this. In the past, I will say you, we've got some um, definition of the cable who prevents you to connect two hosts together or two devices together. I think you remember such kind of connectors that you can see on printer or things like that. And you are sure that you are connected the cable in the good way and with a host and a device. But that changed a little bit with what we call the OTG because we can switch, I will say, the rule of host and the device dynamically. And it sends the five pin. You know, I, I'm told you about four pin, but I say, okay, sometime we got one, one more. On this one, it was an ID pin. It allows you to switch the rule between the host and the device. If you wonder what is it for, you've got an idea for an example. Everyone got one here, sure. Just your phone. Your phone can be used as a USB key from a device, but you can also check a device you plug in a USB key. So sometimes it could be the host, the one who request the information, and sometimes you could give the information. Signal quality, so it's what I've, I've told you a little bit about what we call the generator ice diagram. So to do this, you have to do many measurements with an oscilloscope, then use the tools that you've got from USB org, and you will generate these figures. These figures is typically do many measurements and just check how long it time it uh, how long it takes to go, to go from 0 to 3.3 volt on the different pin. So, for example, here, here it exceeds a little bit the voltage. Then you always check also the times for going up and going down. This is really the, the way to check that your hardware is correct. So, when we're talking about certification, I don't remember your name, sorry. Your name is... Uh, Giordano, so it's really this which is interesting you, it's this eye diagram. So you do so many measurements with your oscilloscope, then you've got a tool on USB org and you will generate these curves, and with this you ensure that you fit with the requirement of the USB, that means you will manage to communicate with a, a USB device or USB host. Okay, so now we will start it to go much more in details. Don't be afraid by this array. You can't remember it. It's not possible in five minutes, or you are genius. Um, so just to say, you okay, diffusion one is this. And then you can see that we've got data G, data K states. So the G state on the K state will be the level uh, resulting on the encoding of the both line. And they are switched from low speed and full speed. That means a data G state in the low speed is a differential zero, data G state in full speed is a differential one. 
Just keep this information in mind. This will help you to understand the next slide after. Okay, forget the rest. It just, I will say how it's encoded on the line, what is the symbol, whether that is in our um, description of the protocol. Don't worry about this. Let's go on the host device, a device, host and device, sorry. And we, got, we will talk first in low speed and full speed configuration. So here we've got the wires and we are connected together. On the host side, there is two pull down registers who tie the line to zero. Okay, this is by definition should be like this. On the host side, depending if you are in the low speed or in full speed, you will have a pull up registers on one of the line. If your device is a low speed one, you will have a pull up on the D minus. That's a way for the host to know if it's a low speed or a full speed that is in front of him. Okay? It's really a hardware configuration or we say hardware setup that defines if you are low speed or full speed. Okay? If I'm a full speed one, I've got the pull up on the D plus. Really basic. It's okay for everybody. No magic there. So now let's see what is, I would say, symbolized in the both sides. First, we will have a transmitters. That's me a way to drive the both line to put a zero on the or a one. But let's stop talking about zero on one, but let's talk about G and K state. You remember before, I just request you to remember we've got a G state or a K state. It's just a zero in the full speed is the G state, a zero in, f in the high speed is the K state, okay? So here, it's a way to transmit the both. We've got a special one, which is a single-ended zero, that's allowed to tie the both line to zero. In this case, if the both line is to zero, you are not in differential configuration, I would say. It's used, for example, to say that I'm down or things like that. Then we need to receive the state. So we've got differential receivers. It's allowed to detect a differential one or a differential zero. And then we also need to know what are the level of each of the line. Because if you do uh, assert a single and zero, that means you, both, you tie the both line to zero, you need to detect it. It can't be detected by this one because you will interpret it not as a differential. So you will need to use this one to give the information on the D plus and the D minus. It's okay for everybody, the role of the different blocks that are here. It just symbolizes how we will drive the line level and how we can listen this. Again, everything will be high by the hardware and you don't have to deal with it, but just to understand what are the basics on the hardware. So now let's see what's happened in idle. That means we just connected together. What are the different levels we've got? We are in low speed. Do you remember in low speed where is the pull up? D minus, yes. So here we've got a D minus. And here we see the different level. That means we have a high level on the D minus, low level on the D plus. So, okay. Ah, sorry, the colors are not. Okay. So you've got a zero on the D plus. A one on the D minus. So you can see this is interpreted as a G state. So we are in low speed and we've got a G state because the G state is defined as a one on the D minus and a zero on the D plus. This is a default the default uh, value. That means when we just connected the both, thanks to this pull up on the D minus and this, this pull down on the both line on the host one, it was a default level. Okay for you? Let's go for the full speed. So this time, the pull-up is in the D plus. And you've got one to the data plus and zero to the D minus. We found again what we call the G state in full speed. It's why I insist, just to say, you okay, now we we'll just talk about car state and G state. And depending if you are in a full speed or if you are in a low speed, 
it just switch the value on the line, okay? It's just a convention for discuss together. So the G state, the full line. Okay, and what we call a cast state, then when we are in G state, we are in default. Now we enable the transceivers, then the host will drive this line to one, so the D minus, and then we will have a cast state that could be seen on the bus. It just to explain you that after, when you've got the default one, thanks to the pull ups and the pull down, you will use the transceivers is to set the level of what you want to send. Have I lost somebody? Don't hesitate, I mean... No? Okay, about connection. So by default, we are on connect. We've got this pull up there. So we've got some information there. How we detect that we are connected? As soon as we are connected, we can find it, the pull up that is just set one. So we've got a G state that is on the host side. So we detect that a device has been connected. How the device knows that it's connected? Thank the Webus, because it received 5 volts on the other pin, which is not symbolized here. Okay, it's a way that our device detects that it's connected to a host, or maybe it could be self-powered, that means it could be powered by this Webus, or it could have an external power, so it's depending. So this is the connect of the full spin. I don't know, so about disconnect, then we will lose the V-bus on this side. On, on the other side, if you disconnect, you've got two level to zero. That's a way for the host to understand that the device has been disconnected. So really basic one, just on the levels. About reset, so there is a possibility for the host to say, okay, device, Reset, that means start again from the beginning, re-enumerate you, do whatever you want, but reset your, po your, your device. This will be done by tie the both line to zero. So it's a violation of the differential uh, level we discussed together. And as soon as we detect this level for more than 10 milliseconds, the device knows that you need to reset. Just keep in mind that the host has the capabilities to say a device reset, please. switching to high speed. Okay, this is a little bit complicated. First, we always connected in full speed, okay, or low speed. And if the device got the capability to go in high speed, it will do some protocol test with the host. That means it will say to the host, okay, I try to, to speak faster, okay. And the host will say, okay, you want to, to discuss faster? Let's try to do this. This is a special thing that it's a Special chip and check, a uh, little bit complicated, I would say. We have to understand that high speed is completely different from full speed from the hardware point of view. It's more driven by current more than by voltage. So here I will just, it's a little bit more complicated. The transceiver is duplicated. That means you've got special transceiver when you are in high speed. You have a special receiver for the high speed one because it's driven by current. So you've got this kind of things. So it's keep, it's remained the, the same to detect if you are a first a full speed or a low speed. And then, so you are in idle state. And then the device say, okay, I will try to discuss with you in high speed. And then on the other side, the host will detect this level and will also try to send a cast state in high speed. And after, there is some kind of switching from cast state and state, but in high speed. Only check if it's working. If it's not working, it will fall back in the full speed or low speed. So just keep in mind this capability to go in high speed is a request from the device to say, I've got these capabilities. Do you want to do it from a hardware point of view? And the host just tested it. It's okay for everybody? Okay. 
USB Type-C and power delivery. So just a couple of words, and we've got a special uh, dedicated uh, chapter on this. So you can see the number of pins. But we still have our D plus, D minus here. We still have our V bus on the ground, but we've got many other pins. So it's not addressed by our product or STM32 product today. We've got the G0 we arrive, who is allowed the power delivery. That means it got some of those pins that are needed to help negotiate the power delivery. The G0 won't do this power delivery for sure. We are not able to generate some 5 volt with our microcontrollers. Uh, it's not magic, but we can driving some relay to have this power delivery. So it's something quite new. About the uh, OTG, I already gave you a little word on this. We've got an additional pin which allow you to switch the rule of the host on the device. This is not supported by our software library, but it's supported by our hardware. That means if you want to implement such kind of mechanism, you have to develop your own stack or to request somebody to help you on this. We are our, our hardware capa uh, capable for this, for sure, but not software. 